Guys, it's Attack on Samurai, and welcome to my Smogon Tour um, week. I think it's like week eight now. A week eight uh, match for uh, Sword and Shield. So uh, this is gonna be my day one match actually. So I'm probably gonna do. Uh, I mean, I'll be playing my day two game uh, today as I'm recording. So today's Saturday. So uh, this was Friday. This game right here. Um, so uh, before we get started though with this game. Uh, make sure you guys have a like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, join my Discord Bushido Gang, and subscribe for some more content on the channel. Also, follow me on my Poke Amino, and check out my Smogram profile. All those links will be down in the description. It's getting very, very close to 150 subs. We're only 9 subs away, guys. Only 9 subs as of right now. So, we're very close to hitting that goal, man. Let's hit that goal soon, man. Let's hit that goal soon. Anyways, so my, so my opponent... And I was very surprised by it, but it's a uh, it's a tournament player uh, known as uh, Reza. Um, so I've seen him a little bit do a lot of like SM uh, or Sun and Moon. I mean, <laughs> he's done a lot of uh, Sun and Moon uh, OU, um, and I think he's even done Oras as well, um, from what I've seen. So he's a pretty good player. So when I fought him, I mean, so when um. So when I was matched with him, I was just like, oh, this is going to be tough. <laughs> this is going to be a tough game. Um, but as you can see, we're pretty much rocking both the same teams. Uh, this is my signature team. Um, if you got, Again, if you guys haven't seen that team builder with this team that I'm using right now, I will leave it in the description. But I will let you know, this is one of my favorite teams to use in Sword and, Sword and Shield right now. Like I love this team so much because of just how strong it is. And I made this team during the pre-home meta. So the fact it's still able to hold its own in a meta in the... Uh, in the new meta right now it's it's saying something who knows it might even do well in dlc maybe but i'm definitely not dropping this team. this team's just two flames anyways like i said he has the same we pretty much have the same teams um so except you know he has a drill so he can do a lot more with it but uh, i'm done talking let's actually dive into the game so turn one he leaves with rotom as i leave with my jirachi so matchup so matchup wise both of our Rotoms are really good against each other, except my Rotom is actually better because he doesn't really have a real Rotom answer besides his own Rotom. So Overheat is very, very good for me. So I can so I can pretty much freely sit up on a lot of his mods. I can sit up on the hip on the hip, sit up on Clef. I sit up on a lot of things on this team. So he's gonna try and play accordingly to it and try to like play around the Rotom. Uh, but anyways, I leave with Jirachi first because I felt like it was the best lead against him. Um, and plus, I uh, and plus um, had a feeling that maybe Healy with Ferrothorn or something, which is why I led with Jirachi like this, or even Hip to get Sand up turn one. But uh, anyways, I led with Jirachi, and now I'm gonna U-turn out because I don't want to stay in here and take an overheat. So I go into my into my Rapier as he catches it and goes for the toxic. Cause that was a great play on his part, uh, catching my uh, ra catching my Rapier. So he brings in Hip now as I get up rocks. So now, so now I have two options here. Um, right, right here is also another really good mod here too because he has no ground resist. I mean, he does. He has the he has the ro the rotom, but I have a rock move, so he doesn't want to go into it predicting a rock move. But right here is very good here. So I had a lot of options. Um, I could have went for an SD right now and just start wearing him down. Um, which definitely would have uh would have played in my favor. Um, but instead, what I do is I actually switch and go to my own Ferrothorn and get up spikes. So he get, so he gets up free rocks. Which I mean, like, it's okay. I can't really do much about it, about it anyway. So I get up spikes, and I'm pretty much gonna get up all three layers this game because that's what I'm that's what I'm gonna need for my Rotom to actually get the most out of this. So I bring in Rotom now as he goes for a spike of his own. So he gets up three layers. No, wait, no, wait, he gets up two layers. He brings in the Rotom as I go for the nasty plot. So now this is where I start being aggressive with my Rotom. He gets the toxic off on my Rotom. I go for another uh, nasty plot, and now I'm just like, all right, I'm going for this overheat. He goes for an overheat of his own, doing very little. Um, but I get a big ass chunk on that Rotom, so that Rotom is going to be useless after Sand. Um, so he brings in Clef now as I go for the Volt Switch. And now I'm going to go back into Rhyperior and I'm going to be aggressive as hell with my Rhyperior. Now I'm actually going to go for the SD because I'm expecting him to go right into the, uh, right into the Rhydon. I mean not Rhydon, go right into the, uh, Hip. So he brings in Hip as I go for SD. And now I'm just going to go for the 
big damage right here and get off a nice and strong EQ. Doing 67% to that hippo. So that's really, really good damage. Okay, so before I dive into turn 13, I want to let you know that I was going to make a really, really good play here. But at the same time, I was thinking it over and I was just like, there's no point in making this play because it's going to die soon anyway. Yep, you guessed it. I was thinking about going for the rock move against Ro against Rotom on the switch in. But if I had done that, then Drill would have came in for free and would have tried to spin. So instead what I do is that while he's going to switch, um, I actually switch out instead on this turn, I believe. Uh, well, actually, I go for the Quake, but um, yeah, I go for the Quake anyway, uh, knowing that the Rotom will come in. So I'm going to just uh, save my repair as a sack as he goes for the Overheat now. So going Dragapult probably wasn't the best play, honestly, but I didn't really have another switch in for this. I mean, I, I mean, granted, I could have went T-Tar, but I wouldn't have gotten much out of it anyway. And I do bring in T-Tar anyway after this. So, um, he's going to die now. So, his Rotom's dead, which is perfect. And now he brings in Clef. I go for the U-Turn, and now I bring in T-Tar to be aggressive. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> never mind. I don't do it yet. I don't do it yet. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, okay, actually, this is the play where he goes into a Paladon. So, um, I should have went for the Whip. If I Whip right there, that would have been a dead hit definitely would have been a dead hit but instead I got too greedy and wanted to get up more spikes even though his team isn't really like I mean it's good for the Ferrothorn and everything else but Clef doesn't really you know take anything from it so I bring in Rotom uh, right now as I'm expecting him to go into the fashion I go for the overheat anyway because I want to damage so Clef's in here and now I get a, now I go for the Volt Switch because I'm just like I'm not trying to stay in here with this Clef so I'm a Volt Switch here as uh, now I can go into my T-Tar and now this is where I start you know Showing the power of Choice Bandit T-Tar. So he goes for the Wish. And then he goes for Protect the Scout for whatever I go for. So he sees I go for the Crunch. He gets off his Rest. Or I mean, he gets off his uh, his Wish. And I'm just like, okay. So Clef's going to do the thing it always does. I go for a Crunch and that does a lot of damage. Now, he gets off the Wish again. And he's going to keep doing this for the next two turns. Um, Honestly, I started to get annoyed. And I was just like, alright, I'm going to switch now and go Ferrothorn. Expecting him to maybe like switch out or something, but he gets off a of wish again, and they and nice to bring the uh, his own Ferrothorn back in, and I'm just like, okay, so Pharaoh's back. I go into Jirachi, and now this is probably the most pivotal point in this match right now because this is the point where where one my Rotom's already like very weakened, so if I can get it back up, then it's going to put in a lot of work right now because like I said. This hip is gonna die after all these after all these hazards are up, and a plus three, uh, or I mean a plus six, not plus six, actually even a plus five or even plus four. Over he's gonna do a lot to that cleft. So I pretty much prioritize getting up a healing with Jirachi because I don't really need it at this point. Because looking at his team, it doesn't really do much. And also, I was thinking that that Dragapult might be Choice Guard. So really, it would just come down to like a speed tire or whatever with my Dragapult. My Dragapult's already weakened from overheat and spikes and hazards and all that jazz. So I pretty much make the best aggressive play here and I go for the healing wish as he's gonna get off his wish with the Ferrothorn. Um, so I do get my healing wish off as he goes for the knock. And now my Rotom is in here. And now what I can do is just go for an overheat and knock him out. I was really debating on going for the going for a nasty plot. If I went for the nasty plot there, then well one my item would have got knocked off. So it would have been bad for me and I would have had to come in on rocks and that would have been terrible. So I had to make the aggressive play and go for the overheat. So his Ferrothorn is dead. Now Dragapult's in here. And I'm just like, oh boy, what's this thing about to do? So I go into my repair, I go into my repair and I sack it. And he shows a hex. Now when he showed a hex, I immediately I immediately thought, okay, he's not Choice Scarf. Because on a Dragapult, if you see a Dragapult run hex, you gotta assume it's not choice it's it's not choice scarf. Because the hex set usually runs like Hex, Willow, U-Turn, and then Dra and then Draco, or my set, which is like sub, which is the uh, sub hex set with sub hex Willow and Draco. Um, but he was running U-Turn, as you're gonna see. So I'm gonna sack right here. I'm gonna bring in my own Dragapult. Now this is the play where um I should have just went for the Shadow Ball here, but instead I make a really really bad play and I just go for the U-Turn on the Hippo, knowing that he was Helmet anyway. Um, and I was going to live after Sam, but yeah, the U-turn play was really bad. That was a very bad play on my part. So I kind of have to eat that one. And now I bring in my Ferrothorn. And now he goes in the Clef and I go for the Power Whip this time. So I get some big damage on that Clef. Um, but now at this point, 
I have to go root him, and I have to be aggressive, and I have to go for the nasty plot. That's the only way I can get anything out of this. So I go for the nasty plot now. As he actually gets off the wish, if he gets off the teleport into the dragon plot, I'm just like, yo, yo. That was a really good play. And I really didn't have much else for it. Um, I, I expected it. I kind of expected it. Or, I mean, no, I expected it at the last moment. I was just like, he's going to teleport, isn't he? <laughs> so when he showed the teleport, I was just like, no. This thing's back to full. No. So now I'm kind of in a position where my T-Tar is going to be very important now because this is the only thing I can deal with the uh, with the dragon pole at this point so I mean I still have the Rotom as well but again he has Draco and I don't want to take a Draco so t is my only answer to the dragon pole at this point so the fact that this thing is back to full really really sucks and I have to go t right now as he goes for the hex on my switch in so he goes for the hex does a little bit of damage guys, then he goes for the u-turn and u-turn does a lot right there so now i'm not going to go for a crunch because i know he's helmet so i'm going for the quake right here as i'm able to knock out his hippo so now the hippo's dead now i'm just like all right cool so now drill comes in all right i gotta talk about this play right now so drill being drill being in here with sand up is probably the worst thing possible because for one he could easily spin he can easily hit me with an iron head he can easily set up or he can predict my rotom switching so he had four options he had four options technically technically five he could just quake here too actually i think that that was already one of the four options but he had four options here so my play was he's either going to attack me or he's going to go for the rapid spin or i mean the, well duh or he was going to set up on me I don't know why. I don't know why I thought setup. Setup was definitely not the option, but I knew it was going to attack me. So, I was thinking that, okay, I can stay in here because he's probably going to predict my Ferrothorn switch in. And he's probably going to go for the SD. Granted, he doesn't have to do that because he's already in a winning position with, the with his drill right now. But, I was really trying to think that yeah, there's no way he's going to spin at this point. <laughs> because, again, looking at it. He could literally just win right now with Drill by just clicking Quake. Like, literally, that's all he had to do. So, I was okay with with T-Tar dropping because I knew that I was going to lose at this point anyway. So, my opponent did something crazy. Now, in hindsight, what I should have done here was actually go into Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn was literally the, the weakest link here, but also T-Tar was too. So, it was really difficult for me to choose what to go into. But... Still, I did have a chance to still win this game because I do, because again, he could miss a rock slide. So I had to go off that too. So what my opponent's going to do is actually go for the spin and I stand with T-Tar. That was literally the worst play I could have done. And that Dragapult is now just going to be healthy. And I pretty much just knew it's over. He goes for the SD, goes for the overheat. And I go for the overheat and I kill his drill. So Rotom got three kills this game, which is insane. Um, but... Dragapult comes in, goes for the Hex, and uh, I go for a Nasty Plot knowing that it's already over. Can't really do much. Maybe he can miss a Hex or something. It's not RBY. He's not going to miss a Hex. <laughs> so, Ferrothor can come in here and just die to Hex, and that's going to be that. So, yeah, again, if I had I went Ferroth... If I had the, ah, crap. Had I went, um... Yeah, had I went into this, he would have... Well, one, I would have... I wouldn't have died. Um... Actually, I think I might have died. No, I wouldn't have died anyway. Even at the range I was at. I don't think I would have died. So, I think regardless, whatever I did wasn't going to win me the game. I would have got damage on Drill. I definitely would have got damage on Drill. But t was already dead at the point. I mean, at that point. So, it was a really good game. It was a very close game. Um, but I literally had no other option. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. Like, thinking about it now. Yeah, even if I did go Pharaoh. He still would have got the spin off, but he would have taken a lot of uh, recoil from uh, from helmet and uh, iron barbs. But then again, I'm not too sure. I think he still might have dropped. Um, I kind of want to do some calcing right now, but I'm pretty sure. I don't think I don't think rabbit spin kills at 10%. It might though. Drill is a very strong mon. It might have killed uh, my pharaoh at 10%. So he probably wouldn't have got it off, and I would have, and I might have had a shot with Rotom, but. 
So, this was probably the closest game I've had of Smoke on Tour. Like, literally, this might have been the closest game I've had. Um, it was a really good game, though. Very good game. I love this game so much. <laughs> this was this literally had to be my best uh, Smoke on Tour game so far. Um, by a long shot. So, um, I'm going to try and get game two, or not game two, um, day two up. Um, again, depending on how far I get. So, uh, so yeah, again, I hope you guys did enjoy this one. I really enjoyed this match. Um... But, uh, but again, if you guys did, though, make sure you guys have a like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, join my Discord Bushido Gang, and subscribe for some more content on the channel. Also, follow me on my Poke Amino, and check out my Smogram profile. All those links will be down in the description on this. Let me know what you guys think I could have done differently in this game, or or just, like, how impressed you guys were about this game or something like that. Just just say something that you felt about this game. We'd like to know that. But, um, but yeah, after this, I'm going to try and record my RBY games. As I did have my RBY match uh, yesterday, so uh, so yeah, I'll be recording that, and I'll probably post that today, maybe. I know this this tournament game you're seeing right now. This will probably go up today, Saturday being um, the the RBY one. I'll the RBY one. I'll try to get up today as well. But it'll probably go up. It'll probably go up tomorrow, as I did miss my recordings for Friday. So okay, I'm ra I'm ra I'm rambling. <laughs> I'm rambling. I'll see you. Peace out.